Why, hello everybody. Guess what? I'm here in the new Fortress of Creation. Yeah, that's right. I finally moved into the new place. And uh, as you can see, I've got horny green as the color behind me. Um, I don't like the color. I grew up in a house that had this exact same color. So this is kind of like nostalgic for me in a way. But anyways, so I have been unable to film anything for uh, about a week, almost two, because I've been packing, getting ready to move. That did not go all that well. But, I got just about everything done. And I was able to pull it all back together at the last minute. And with the help of friends and an actual decent landlord, got everything together. But this video, I wanted to make specifically to call something out. Now, as you know, <coughs> a lot of people will be perusing YouTube, typing in questions like, what is the best entry-level novice 3D printer that has a decent-sized bed I can at least print most stuff with? It isn't going to cost me an arm and a leg. What is the best? You will find a lot of people will recommend the Creality Ender 3. Yes, that is a very good machine. It is a very good intermediate or introductory machine, and I don't fault it. However, after using your Creality, and using the machine I recommend, the machine I recommend, I think is a lot easier, and it literally is pull out of the box, put in the thread, put in the program, in the STL file, print. Mine is a unique case. I have never once heated up the bed because I got a discount on it buying it semi-used from Amazon of about $20 because the bed didn't heat up. So with a little bit of the grippy stuff for a build pad, I started printing on it and have never had a problem with it. Now what may you say is this fabulous 3D printer? Mosquito. Florida. Even when winter's coming and I got all my cold stuff out, you still got those nasty eagle-sized mosquitoes. But, I digress. Let me show you the printer I'm talking about. This is the printer I'm talking about. This is the Monopiece version 2 or 3, version 3 Select Mini. This printer is all metal construction. You will not find plastic parts on this one. It is very rugged in its design, and it is very fluent and smooth in its printing. 
it has very simple controls. Let me show you closer the control panel. As you can see here, the control panel is very simple. As you can tell, my thermal sensor has a thermal runaway. It says it's 999 degrees. That's not that's not right. This 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 bed is completely like it might be a few degrees warm, but the heating element is totally messed up. This is not a touch screen, but you know this little control wheel does it all. You can select I've got it selecting different speeds at the moment. But uh you can access any menu on here by simply scrolling over it and clicking the button. And that will change it. Now, I have a 0.5 millimeter difference. To remind myself here, this is a little note to me, that this machine has a 0.5 millimeter difference than my Ten Long and my TiVo. Just, it does. Not that that is anything bad about this machine, just it's calibrated different than my other machines. This printer came with a spool holder, which on some cheaper basic models, they just don't have. As you can see, this printer is so valuable to me and works so well for my needs and just works so well, per per period. I have done my own Frankenstein rewiring. I had to install a new heating block because I broke the neck between the heat sink and the heating block. You must be careful when replacing the different uh, extruder heads on this model because if you're not careful, it is very easy to break the threaded end for the connection between the heat sink and the uh, heater block. I just ordered a whole new assembly. It was, I found the individual parts and also did not want to go through the crap to try to get it done. So I just ordered a new one. <coughs> This is not auto bed leveling. You still need a hex key to level a bed, which is really easy. Now, I've had this machine for now three and a half years. I have put so many hours on it. There's been very few times this machine hasn't been running in those three years. And after a torture test like that, I can tell you that this machine, by model price, this 3D printer is excellent for a beginner. This is the machine I started out on and I learned to 3D print on. And I have gone on to other machines. And I still want more machines. And I think this might be a new, very expensive drug habit, but you know, whatever. Okay, so that's my selection for a basic, intermediate, basic to intermediate 3D printer for your starting newbie. It is very user friendly, it's very easy to use, and even once you've gotten that beautiful $1,200 machine that has a temperature controlled printing, cage, auto bed leveling, 
dual feed extruder with all this nice bells and whistles. Touch screen, can print in temperatures that you can even do uh, carbon fiber in. Still, this is a great printer. Even though it doesn't have all the bells and whistles, I still use this printer because it does have, for the price of a brand new one, I believe is about $169. <clears throat> Even for that price, it has a high degree of accuracy. It is capable of printing into the ultra fine setting, which is, let me pull up the specific numbers. The ultrafine setting that this machine can print in is 0 0.044 meters, no meters. <clears throat> and it can print in its lowest quality at 0 0.35 millimeters. It has a top speed, printer speed of 60. top printer speed of 60, 60 millimeters a second. Not the fastest, but pretty damn fast for a beginner. It has a temperature range of about 230. For my machine, pressing at about 245 it struggles to get that high. But temperatures between 190 and 235 are not a problem for this machine. And I'm sure if you get a brand new one where the bed heating actually does work, <laughs> getting it up between 60 and 70 degrees wouldn't be a problem either. <clears throat> I have used PLA, Pet G and a metal and some metal composite PLAs in this mono piece. Price, piece. It's one of the two. All have worked just fine. I have used the difficult, all hated. Not even gonna say the name. I hate him so much. I have used the PLA from the company that shall not be named. I've used my favorite, Overture. Absolute, beautiful, just perfect. I've used Amazon Basic. I've used quite a few other uh, PLA and Pet G manufacturers in this machine. Huh? I ain't had a problem yet. Don't get regular clogs. Done. I've had to do very little adjustment on this, which is another feature that I think makes it a perfect machine for beginners. When you initially set up a machine where you don't have to worry about constant adjustments, it allows you freedom to create without uh, hesitation. The less you have to worry about mechanically, the more you can work on aesthetically and rendering. And the more you know, the more you grow. Or is it knowing is half the battle? <laughs> I can't remember. It's, it's one of the two. So this is just a little thing I wanted to get out there and throw out and you know, put on the channel, get out there, let you know. Once again, I really do endorse Monoprice. Peace. Price. I think it's Monoprice. Please. 
Comment down below which one it is. Is it Mono Price or Mono Priest? I think it's Mono Price. Anyways, I really do on my next buying habit for machines because we might be getting that stimulus here soon. My next purchase is going to be their two under $200 resin printer. As some of you may know, I did get a longer orange 30 resin printer. That was a mistake. That was a mistake. It was on sale. And it, lit, it did get me interested in doing resin printing. And I turned out some really nice stuff with it. But for the longest time, I couldn't use it because the slicer software kept crashing. Their own slicer software would crash if I tried to render more than two models. Yeah. So I am curious to see how much better. Mono price. It's mono price. Mono price seems to be. Because I love their mono price. Select Mini Version 2. Uh, designation E3D. So it's Version 2, Edition 3. Alright. I think that's what it stands for. <clears throat> and I am interested... Once again, getting back to what I was talking about, I'm <laughs> interested in getting a resin printer and seeing how well that turns out. So, that's it. Tune in next time, and I'll be discussing a new project. Because, guess what? As soon as I get my shop set up and start working again, my new project will be a 40K... Space Marine Chaplain for my Dark Templar or Black Templar cosplaying customer. Alright? So stay tuned. You'll want to see this build. Because I'm going to do the project and I'm going to try to keep videos of everything I do along the way and show it to you as I build it. Hopefully, this time, capture my customer's big beefy smile for all you see. <laughs> Alright, I'm Papa Jester for 3D Printing the Miniature Universe. Remember to print whatever you want, everything you want, but always remember, have fun 3D printing, and I'll see you later. Hello, I am Professor Bornfest! Thank you for watching my video on the review of these products. Please remember to like and share this review. Tell your friends about me! Okay, bye bye Remember, I put out more videos almost every week. If I'm not fighting depression demon, Lydia! <laughs> Goodbye!